Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that's a live Bible question answer program with you, the radio audience, any point in time. During this broadcast, you can pick up your phones by dialing 281-837-2222. You can have all of your Bible questions asked and answered uh, on this Unadulterated Truth Broadcast radio station. And that's the Goose Creek Church of Christ, 4211 North Main Street here in Baytown, Texas, 7 p.m. nightly, October 10th through the 15th. The subject is, it sounds good, but is it sound doctrine? All right, that being said, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 15, and I want to read verse 10 through 20 before I toss it to Brother Javier Frias. Matthew 15, verses 10 through 20, as we're going to deal with the subject, is your flavor of sin moral or doctrinal? Is your moral, or your flavor rather, of sin moral or doctrinal? In Matthew 15 and verse 10, the Bible says, And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father had not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind, leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are you also yet without understanding? Do not ye understand that whatsoever entering at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out in the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands, defile it, not a man. Again, the subject is, is your flavor of sin moral or doctrinal? The number is 281-837-2222 if you have any questions or any comments you'd like to make during this broadcast. At this time, Brother Javier Frias will uh, uh, expound on our subject. Brother Javier Frias. God bless you, Brother Henry. Thank you, my brother. Audience, God bless you. We pray that you're listening to this subject. Very important subject today. When it comes to the order of what God desires, that you put him first above all people, above all things, principalities and powers that exist on earth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Christ knows that God is above him. Christ gives heed to his Father. He does things that please his Father. When he was on earth, he said, I must be about my Father's business. So when it comes to on earth, it says here, the head of the woman is the man. So women understand that man is the head of the woman. That's how God had set it up. And so when it comes to the man, the man is supposed to take heed to God's word, God's counsel, commandments, doctrine, and lead therewith in what God has given. But the idea is that on this planet, there are men who have embarked and embraced sin, and they're not doing and leading as God would have them to lead their households, their wives, in doctrinal areas or in moral areas. And so we want to talk about a few details here in the scriptures uh, concerning what God desires of men and women and children and also of teachers. Because you have false teachers such as Joel Osteen, you have T.D. Jakes, and you have this other individual who calls himself a, a Hebraist, uh, who believes in the, the black Israelites when it comes to uh, this gentleman, Michael Johnson, I believe his name is, who is a false teacher. And so when it comes to Proverbs chapter 31, dealing with the woman, it says, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. The Bible says, many daughters have done virtuously. He says, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord. The Bible says, she shall be praised. Now, it says, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Are you seeking to excel? The way that you excel is just by giving heed to what God has instructed, the whole counsel of God, 
and waking up and doing it. Fearing God above all men, above your husband. If your husband desires that you go to a, to a denomination, if your husband desires that you commit sin, you do not listen to your husband. You listen to Christ, uh, the husband. If you look at Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9, the Bible says, It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. Now, that's the type of woman you don't want to be. Just like this past few weeks, there was an NFL player who was stabbed by his girlfriend twice. And I believe it happened uh, some time past. But the idea is that he fought for her, that she not go to jail. He flatlined twice, almost died. And then he had to scream at the young lady to leave the club and threw some pumpkins at her. Now he's in jail. Now th this character, individual, is making a bad choice of the type of woman he's seeking into where he's looking at the value of her appearance above the value of her inner character. And so the idea is that now he's in jail for throwing pumpkins at the girl. And he got stabbed uh, by the same girl a few weeks ago. And so he rescued her from that. So now he's in a predicament where he is allowing his his carnal mind to lead him instead of the strength that comes from the character of Christ. But the scripture says in Proverbs 21, uh, verse 9, it's better to dwell at the corner of a house. There's another scripture in Proverbs that says it's better to live in the woods, in the wilderness, than be with these type of women. And so when, when it comes to judgment, discernment, perception, you have to look at the inner man to look at the value of a character, whether it's female or or male, whether it's doctrinal coming from a teacher, don't just respect them because you see men praising him. Test the spirits whether they are of God. Prove all things whether they are of God. There's individuals who maybe are divorced three times, two times, have three different kids, three different fathers, three different baby mothers. The only remedy you seek for is to go to the club to get drunk, to alleviate your pain, the stress, of having to deal with maybe child support, uh, maybe you don't want to pay child support, and the idea is that you you go to seek it again, the drugs, the evil things that you seek for, whether it be sexual immorality, and then you end up getting another woman pregnant or getting pregnant by another man, and you end up in the cycle of sin that you continue to go on instead of seeking uh, for a godly seed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, for those who don't want to pay uh, for child support, Maybe you get tired of it and you say, I've had enough. I just want to drink my life away and all my money leaves my bank account and goes to this lady or this harlot or this harlot that I've slept with. And verse 1, let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be ordained are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil Without them, be afraid of the power. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise uh, of the same. The idea is that you want to not repeat the same sin or the same error again. Seek after godly seed. Seek after a man or woman with value. And from there, you begin your new walk and leave the past behind you. And you continue to repair the things that need to be repaired. So when it comes to uh, the scriptures... In Proverbs chapter, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 2. I want to look at another viewpoint of what happens. This happens to both male and female. Proverbs 2, looking at verse 16, uh, the Bible says, uh, To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattered with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclined it unto death, and her past unto the dead. The Bible says that she forsakes the guide of of her youth forgets the covenant of her God she forgets the covenant of God she forgets the God of her youth she doesn't even think upon him she cares about her life focusing on the carnality what you can see what you can taste and smell what praise you can get from your fellows whether younger or older what attention you can get this becomes the new you because why you forsook God you forsook the covenant Look at Genesis chapter number 27, looking at verse number 46. This is dealing with the uh, Old Testament because there was a lot of stress going on in the mindset of um, Isaac and also 
of, I believe, Rebekah, uh, Genesis 27, 46. The Bible says, And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? The Bible says, what good shall my life do me? So these girls, these women, these ghetto girls that Rebecca knew of, she was perceiving if he takes, um, he says, I'm weary, if Jacob takes a wife of these type of women, she said, what good is my life going to be unto me? Because of the stress, the false doctrine, mm -hmm. the false gods, the weariness, the drunkenness, <laughs> the evil that comes from them, whatever evil is brewing in their conscience, she said, what good is that to me? So you don't give peace to your mother, to your father because of, of who you choose. You don't give peace to your mother, your father, or yourself because of the doctrine that you choose, the false teaching. God doesn't give, give you rest. He is displeased with your choice of the character that you chose, whether it's Michael Johnson, T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen. Because remember, these Women that are not married to Christ, which is the husband of one wife, one bride, which is the church of Christ. He is not pleased with these harlots, where the Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian. He's not pleased with these women. He is not. Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3. I want to look at another viewpoint here that God is showing because he's displeased with this characteristic as well. Looking at verse 12. The Bible says... As for my people, he says, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy, destroy the way of thy path. So God doesn't like it when the children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. We just read 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3, how the men is the head of the wife. But in verse number 12 of Isaiah 3, it says that women rule over them. This equality thing is contrary to the doctrine of Christ. Not saying that because the man is the head, he should be manipulative or he should manipulate. But he should give heed to the character of Christ and the doctrine and the counsel, the commandments of God. And lead therewith with that truth. Lead his, lead his family with that truth. Not in a manipulative way. Because a lot of mm. women will think, well, he's going to manipulate me. He's going to deceive me or trick me. That's not the mindset I'm speaking about. The mindset, the masculine mindset is dealing with uh, the way God has designed the character to be. In John chapter 4, the woman that had five husbands, the one that she had is not her husband. What does the Bible say? Let's read it. Verse 18, For thou hast had five husbands, and, the, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that says thou truly. Now she can marry this other gentleman. The New Testament is going to be in effect. She can have all the sins washed away, whatever sins she committed. And she can be one flesh, for those who teach against marriage, divorce, remarriage, she can be one flesh with this new husband, and she can walk and carry a cross with Christ. So if you've been married several times, you have several trials that you had in your lifetime, understand that Christ can wash you away of adultery. Amen. He can make you one with the new spouse, but just use wisdom. Even as Rebecca was telling Isaac about Jacob, even as the scripture talks about in Proverbs chapter number uh, 21 verse 9 about the brawling woman in the white house, take heed and use wisdom. Judge the inner man. Don't be weak and foolish in your judgments. Because remember, just as you can be morally, you can be doctrinally as well. You can give heed to the counsel and doctrine of another woman, which is Jehovah's Witness which is Presbyterian, which is Baptist Methodist, which is these Israelite groups. If you give heed to these harlots that that were made by men that are not Christ in a time that is not the time of the day of Pentecost, in a location that is not Jerusalem, by doctrines that did not come from heaven, you're giving heed to a harlot, a woman that has no worth, no value before God's eyesight. The number to call is 281-837-2222. Thank you, Brother Javier, uh, for laying the foundation. And then while Brother Ozan comes to the mic, I just want to read uh, what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6-9 uh, uh, to the Christians there in Corinth. 
He says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusing themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And so often people get upset with us, but all we're doing is repeating the oracles. You notice abusers of themselves with mankind. That's homosexuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't apologize for this. God didn't create you a homosexual. Mm -hmm. And if that's your flavor of sin, I'm going to tell you, you need to repent of that. And you can repent of that by coming to Jesus. And as Brother Javier mentioned, these other women who are giving you counsel, these loose living women that we're calling religions and denominations, they can't help you. The Baptist is a, is a, is a, a woman that's not of Christ. I want you to make sure you understand it. It's mm -hmm. a loose living uh, woman. They preach another Jesus. And this is why the Baptist church... And, and others like them cannot help the, the young man that they hire to be the drummer or the piano. They just mock him. Um, they talk about him. They, they know that he's gay. They talk behind his back. And, and, and uh, even the Catholic Church, these priests who molest and pedophile boys, you know, they can't help you. All they can do is, because they work for Satan, all they can do is make your life worse than what it is. And before I toss it, let me just say this about Catholicism. They are not Christians. And so for the Muslims that try to link us, the Church of Christ, with any other organization, the Baptists, we're not associated with the Baptists. We're not associated with the Apostolics. We're not associated with the Catholics just because they call themselves Christians. Those guys in the Catholic Church, I'm going to say this, and I mean it, I don't care what they do to my body, those guys who pedophiled young men at a young age in the Catholic Church, these Catholic priests, who all they did was ship from one location to another location of pedophile others they need to be locked up in jail have a day in court just like the boy scout leaders did i don't care how much money they have in the vatican and if they don't get their due punishment down here they don't repent just know this they will stand before just god on the day of judgment mm -hmm. they will stand before jesus christ and give an account for the molestation of these young souls that they have messed up in the name of religion and so I want to make sure everybody understands that. We are not associated with those individual loose living women out there. And so when we're on this radio program, please understand something. You're not talking to any Baptist boys. We're not them. We're not any of these Catholic boys. We don't get on here and lie on God or his word. We preach the Jesus that we read about in the Bible. And so we're not scared of you, and we don't want you scared of us. But just know this, that we are going to teach the Christ that you can read about in the Bible. When we read the Bible, we understand it makes us a Christian and a Christian only. It doesn't make you a Baptist, no such thing. A Methodist Christian, a Catholic Christian, that's foolishness. There's no compound Christians in the Bible. So again, what is your flavor of sin? Is it doctrinal or is it moral? And to ask is to answer. 281-837-2222. Brother Stephen Ozan. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Javier. I just want to commend you, brothers. I want to tell you the truth. Tell the audience, uh, those that are listening, uh, past these videos on the others. Uh, I enjoy learning from these brothers. I learn behind them and I can just sit here and listen to them. They ask me to say something, but I can sit here and listen to them uh, throughout the duration uh, of this program because uh, they're reading from the Bible. I do want to say something before I make a comment and I'll turn it back over to our brothers. Uh, we have a question posed here uh, and it says, uh, is a Christian parent exempt from disfellowshipping with a adult child who a Christian was a Christian living in sin. This is aligned with our program, so I was going to address it. By forsaking the assembly or any sin that the adult child will not repent of. Also, a uh, follow up, in other words, is the physical relation with the child void, uh, the spiritual obligation, if no repentance is made. Now, we're going to read, as Henry said last week, and we said always. We give Bible answers for Bible questions. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 is for all relationships. And let's read what it says. Verse 9. I wrote 1 Corinthians 5, 9 unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. He didn't say except your cousins, your auntie, or your mama. Yet not altogether with fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortions or with idolaters. But then you must needs go out the world. This is your neighbor's co-workers. He's not talking about this fellowship with them. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covetous, 
on idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortion, with such and one know not to eat. But what I'm about to do is judge them also that went up. Do not the, you judge them that are within, but them that are without God judge. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So, you got a saint home according to this question. Okay, now we're going to answer this according to scriptures. Uh, you have to guide your home and follow the word of God. You're going to call yourself a Christian and oversee your home, regardless if your children are Christians or not. But you have to make sure you sanctify your home. But we see here as far as who we eat with, if you have given your children ample time to repent of their sins, whether it's homosexuality, promiscuous love, adultery, whether they're married, uh, self-sex of some type, uh, if they are selling drugs, whatever it is, you have a time frame that you are comfortable with that you have given them enough information. Titus has a letter written to him, and we're going to take the advice that Paul gave Titus in order to address this, because this is right in line with what our subject is. Is about so we're gonna to go to the book of Titus and we're gonna to go to chapter number three and we're gonna see what Titus is told. Titus chapter three, and we're gonna look at if you will, verse eight. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou firm constantly, that they which have believed, that is, in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and intentions. And strive is about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Says so a man that has inherited after the second, the first and second admonition, reject. Now what is that? A man. Not what is it? What about my husband? What about my wife? A man. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinned, being condemned of himself. So, if you're talking to them twice about this, you've had the time to really discuss this with them. And they want to hear more, you're going to work with them. Once they tell you, you know, mom, I'm grown, you know, all that you should be telling me about my love life. That's time to ask them to leave the home and disassociate in eating with them and doing such things. Now, that's what you were instructed in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 to do. Why? Because you're to sanctify the home. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. That will explain the sanctification process. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. The Bible says in verse number 13, and the woman which hath the husband, this is for the husband and wife that believe it not. And if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave it. So if he understands, okay, we're not going to be having weed in the house, not going to be drinking and getting drunk and watching pornography, not even at 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm asleep, we're not doing those things. But then you understand, okay, if he's not pleased with that, he's, he's going to explain who doesn't sanctify. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. That would mean if the husband or the children also got to be sanctified, he's going to cover that. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. That's where your children are clean, but now the holy, how they sanctify, how they sanctify, because you tell them, no, you can't be coming in here and bringing those girls and sneaking them upstairs to have sex. We're not doing that here. But if the unbeliever depart, let them depart, and brother and sisters, not on the body in such cases, but God has called us to peace. So even in a marriage, you're not required to stay married to them. So how did your children become more important than your marriage? They're not. So a person has to understand, if the individual is telling you, I'm trying to work on this mom, trying to get the doctrinal issues right, well, you want to help them develop. But if they tell you, no, you know, I'm going, I'm going to smoke weed with the Ross of Firings, and that's it. And hey, this is the last, it is the reincarnated Christ, and that's what I'm teaching. I don't care what y'all say. Well, then, you know, you say, well, you know, we don't want to eat with you, and we don't want you in the house. So we're going to give you a time period to move out because you've got to have your house sanctified. Amen. Now, it doesn't matter if that's you. Now, now, here's a case where you say, what do I do about my mother living with me? My mother living with me. My mother's teaching the grandchildren about false doctrine. She's Jehovah's Witness, and my mother is sneaking them off to Jehovah's Witness function when she was supposed to be babysitting them while we were at work. And she's taking them to function. Well, you got to say, okay, well, Mom, I love you so much. And if this doesn't stop, this is our fault because I am to serve you. We're going to try to get together a place for you to live by yourself. And when we bring the children out, we will sit with them till we're through. So you can't poison them anymore. You say, well, would you do that? A man sat down his mother as being the queen because she had an idol, one of the kings in the Old Testament. So, yes, that's what you're supposed to do. I hope that covers it. If not, you can call us at 281-837-2222. Now, I want to make a couple of quick comments concerning uh, our subject uh, that is at hand before us. And this is a very good subject. Uh, I want to talk about understanding adulteresses. 
Uh, look at, if you will, Proverbs 6, 26. You don't think the adulteress has power to destroy the soul? The brothers have talked about this, and I just want to read this verse for us, Proverbs 6 and 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. That becomes his value. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. She's hunting for you. And want to encourage you women out there, especially you young women, because we understand the body being younger, it will be more aggressive toward being compassionate and uh, to have sex, to be caressed. Well, that's fine. You deserve that. You're, you're a creation of God. He made you for that. But you need to marry a man. And don't tell him don't put his hands on you. Don't touch you. If he's not going to put a ring on your finger, I'm talking about the one that you marry, not no engagement and promise ring. The married ring with papers attached, he can touch, caress, and make love to you, and then you're satisfied. But the idea is if not, then you are an adulteress. You are actually hunting for his life because you're sleeping with him and your sexual a promiscuity is going to destroy his soul. And you have to understand, don't put yourself out like that. You're made by God. You're better than that. We say, well, it's hard to find a good man, Steve. That's a lie. There are a lot of them. The thing is, you have to advertise for good men. Watch what you dress. You can't dress like somebody, grandmother. I understand that. But watch how you dress. There's no need for him to see uh, the hidden parts until he put the ring, the married ring, on your finger. Don't you know if you aggressively hunt for a man, and stop being so involved with your career and what you buy, you will find a good man. You've got to advertise how? By accepting compliments. Get out there and present yourself as an honorable woman and don't take foul comments, whistles and nasty stuff. Just keep walking by. Because when you address the clown like that, he already knows you're in the category of free sex. Now let's look at the doctrinal part and I'm done. James 4 and 4. The brother said both spiritually uh, from the doctrine standpoint and physically moral. Now let's look at, if you will, James chapter number 4 and look at verse 4. He says, you adulterers, James chapter 4 and verse 4, you adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now if you're a friend of the world and you accept multiple forms of worship, Different types of ideas. Instrumental worship. You accept women as evangelists. Women can tell people about the Bible. I hope they do. But you can't be an evangelist. You can't baptize. Just like men can't have babies. They get you pregnant. Help you raise them. But they can't have them. And that's a simple thing. I believe we taught that well on this program. So you have to understand. You have become an enemy with God. When you embrace the tactics of denominational churches. As a... Brother Javier said you've got guys all online teaching. These guys, let me show you something. These guys don't want to talk to you privately because they don't have the love of God in them. When a guy doesn't want to talk to a woman privately about the Bible, let me tell you what they are. And I'm saying this out of my mouth. You are an individual interested in vaunting yourself up. Amen. You want a platform. Amen. You want to gain more this, and you would like to gain the saints. Because that's the real prize. Because what you have are not saints following you. Amen. And the saints that have left the faith are no longer accepted in the beloved. So you have to understand, anybody that doesn't want to talk to you privately about the Bible, you have to understand, that individual is letting you know, I want to go public, I want to go on Zoom, I want to deal with it. Oh, if you know what you're saying, you'll answer the question publicly. No, what it is, is God loves you. And he wants to have you added to his kingdom. And we as saints, we love you. And we want you to be added to the king. But you have to understand, we have an open program not to vaunt ourselves. That's why we let you call in and say whatever you want. Anybody can call in and dispute and say what you want. But we're going to say the truth. So we leave the faithful saints of Romans 16, 16. The Church of Christ salute you. Amen. First, first, first King 15, 9, in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. And 41 years old, when he reigned in Jerusalem, his mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Abasham. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land, removed oh, all the that king with idols the mother. that his father yeah. had made. Yes. And also Micah, his mother, yeah. even her, he removed from being queen. Oh, but look why, because she had made an idol in a grove, and as Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook Kindra. And so, so mom, that's, that's it, it. Mom. Yeah, because she was so she got, false worship, that's what I'm saying. But she was trying to, you know, do false worship. And if you got a mom in yeah. the house who's bringing children to yeah. false worship, you got to do something. Baby, like. ain't no G.
Jesus as a son of God. He's just a good prophet like Muhammad was. Mm -hmm. but no, we don't, Mama, you know, no, we got to burn this idol. Oh, man. You know, man. we got to do it. We don't have a choice, you know, because that's an idol. You know, man, you know, you can't love nobody more than Jesus, we you know.